I start to say I love to run because, but I can't finish. There's too much. A sentence can't hold it. I was a kid when the 70s met the 80s, when disco was overrun by the fitness craze. I didn't like girls, didn't dance, tripped on my own feet. But I liked sports. I played sports. I ran. I had a weak heart back then. I got dizzy and fell down sometimes. So, I ran for my health. Slower pulse, less stress on the valves. Before we talk about treatment, let's start with a discussion about the human body and about your medical condition. It's not just about my your heart, though. Running has left a track to us from the far reaches of our cultural past. The first marathon was run in 490 BC by a soldier named Philippides who left running from an obscure ancient battlefield bearing news of victory. By then, running was already part of Philippides' culture. Homer's tagline for Achilles was fleet-footed. The climax of 15,000 lines of poetry is a chase scene, Hector running and Achilles following three times around Troy, until poor doomed Hector stops and is killed. And then, some 26 miles later, poor victorious Philippides also dies upon delivering Athens his news. So, I guess, the relationship between health and running is, at best, ambiguous. I got an email from an old girlfriend the other day. Wanted to know what I was up to. She's a doctor, and she was my muse. Language poured out of me to her, the beat of iambic pentameter like ceaseless footfalls, unstressed, stressed, left foot right. I charmed her by telling her I skipped work to run if it was snowing. Running was a courtship ritual. She was an athlete, the 1500 meters, all-American, earned Big Ten honors. Marathons were pointless to her. Of course she could run them, what a stupid question, but why bother? So yeah, she was faster than me, and it always bothered me that that didn't matter to her. I enjoy the sense of accomplishment from running. This is why I prefer running in the winter, which isn't too uncomfortable if one arms himself against the cold. 10 minute miles are really slow, but even at that, 90 minutes is 9 miles, and with the fall leaves off the branches and the summer haze off the air, seeing all a 9 mile course is easy. I can see where I'm from and where I'm heading and feel like I'm getting somewhere, accomplishing something. Achilles knew his fate and the outcome of all wars. Hephaestus had carved it in his new shield. Patroclus had lost Achilles' old shield to Hector. Patroclus had borrowed the shield because Achilles wouldn't fight Hector and his pals because Achilles was mad at Agamemnon. Agamemnon was rich, well-connected, leader of the Greek kings who besieged Troy, and he leveraged his position to steal Achilles' girlfriend, Briseis. In his naive, boyish way, Achilles loved her, and in his crass, grizzled way, Agamemnon wanted a hot little trophy. When Achilles made to kill Agamemnon, Athena grabbed him by the hair and stopped him, and Achilles was left too despondent to kill any more Trojans, preferring to allow them to rout Agamemnon's armies. When my muse left me, I ran. No language left, I counted footfalls instead of syllables and ran epics often as I could. A better runner better appreciates the distance of a run. Four miles, then six, then nine, sometimes the nine miles twice. I told other girls I was training for a marathon and some were impressed. Eventually, my ex told me about the man who had pried her away from me, a rich, well-connected wanker of few words and less personality. He didn't run. He kayaked. Yeah, I wanted to kill him. Anyway, the relationship of running to hell seems at best ambiguous. When I had an affair with my muse that winter, we ran. I knew our time was fleeting and we were just covering the same old ground. But motion was better than stasis, movement a surrogate for destination. When we arrived at the same place we had been before, she ran back to kayaking and I ran off in the snow. My taste in Greek heroes always leads me to Ajax, a good guy, a team player with terrific individual stats. A blue-collar, every-man sort of hero who, but for divine intervention, would have killed Hector himself and saved everyone a lot of trouble. 
When Ajax died, it came as a surprise even to himself. Achilles, though, he knew where he was going. After much suffering amongst the Greeks, Agamemnon gave Briseis back to Achilles, to whom she had become more symbol than person. Achilles was intent on killing Hector. Invulnerable except at the heels, he enjoyed a certain cavalier attitude, but he knew he would die at Troy, knew that each step in the three laps around the city's walls to catch Hector brought him a step closer to his own death. Regardless of whether he recants in a later poem, you got to respect his respect for his destination. It's intriguing to think of what he thought of as he dressed for the trip. The godlike chief in dazzling arms arrayed donned the heavenly gifts, the work of Vulcan's hands. First on his legs the well-wrought greaves he fixed, fastened with silver clasps. His breastplate next around his chest and over his shoulders flung his silver-studded sword with blade of brass. The weighty helm he raised and placed it on his head. The plumed helm shone like a star. Recently, I started to run again. Stressed and lovelorn, I looked upon the snow and couldn't resist. After an overworked year of grad school and anxiety, increasing heart rate and body fat, a year of bilateral tendonitis, the sound of snow and the feeling of distance were divine. Going somewhere, getting something done. Love, health, destiny. I love to run. There's a lot 